Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Some years ago, there was a story that the Russians had encountered this thing they have dubbed Organism 46B. Now, it's been described as an octopus that apparently has some type of telepathic powers. Um, I'm sure there has been some oh, additions made to the story along the way, but stories like this always end up having some grain of truth to them. This particular image we actually covered here um, in our investigation of things in Antarctica, it looks like the larger part of this picture is something that I had referred to as a puddle jumper, a, a specific kind of craft that um, there had been some soft disclosure about in the series Stargate. But on the side of it, it very much does look like there is some type of a biological organism that you can see that has the um, shape of a squid, a giant squid. In this particular case, actually a colossal squid. Now, I know that sounds like it's possibly a distinction without a difference, but apparently there is. A colossal squid on the right is larger and heavier, has more mass, but at least in the cases that they have found is not as long as the thing on the left, the giant squid. So apparently there is this difference. Also, the colossal squid, the one on the right, is actually known, and this is from the wiki on this, as the Antarctic squid, or giant cranch squid. So, given all of that information, what I'm going to show you next might be more evidence for that creature. Now, I was looking into something totally different when I found this location, and it looks like there is a break in the ice here, and this thing has swam up. And it may have captured something. It almost looks like it right here. This, of course, this is the back, the tentacles right here. Here's what they call apparently the mantle. 
and you can see the telltale giant eye of this squid. Now, like I said, looking into something entirely different when I found this. A, one of the main differences between the two squids, or at least the giant and the colossal, is that the colossal squid, the proportions of its body are more mantle to, ten to tentacle, the ratio. It's kind of hard to say. Most squid have um, a lot of tentacles and uh, a smaller portion of their body is dedicated to this area called the head or the mantle. The colossal squid is different. It has a larger proportion of its body dedicated to this mantle area. So this kind of jives. This image does. And it does look like it's hunting and it would be, um, you know, hunting something that exists in the region. This looks like a seal or a sea lion. It does seem to have chased something else up onto the ice here. And I wonder what this is. You see, there's this idea down there that, uh, or I should say an idea in general, that there's so much new information coming out, we might have to rewrite everything we know about Antarctica or we thought we knew about Antarctica. And there's not very many people looking into the continent without some type of an agenda, whether it be, you know, the global warming nonsense or whatever, looking at it just critically, looking at the images, what do they show, what can we take from it? Most people that do that um, get labeled real quick, and I'm getting used to that, so... But we're going to soldier on the amount of images that we found and the clarity that we found them. The documentation can't be undone at this point. Um, that's why I like doing videos about them, sharing the coordinates. You can go there. You can screenshot them. You can take your own images. You can do whatever you want with them. And if I've got hundreds or thousands of people around the globe doing this, there's no way they're going to hide it. If something would ever happen to me or if I would go away, not a big deal. It will continue. But there are those that have been um, looking into this far longer than I have. One of them is a channel named Atlantean Gardens. And this guy is an absolute expert on this. He is uh, He knows just about everything there is to know about it. His name is Robert Sepper, last name S-E-P-E-H-R. He has two channels on YouTube, both under that name, one written classically, one all small letters, no spaces. And then he has two channels, both named Atlantean Gardens. And he's written books about this. This, I would like to share a small clip from one of his videos. And he's actually sharing a clip from something completely different. So it would be like, you know, third-hand sharing here. But it goes to something else. It was the original reason I was in the region when I found the squid. I wasn't looking for squid. And it speaks to this idea of how could a civilization exist under the ice. People think of how could they live in Antarctica. It's frozen wasteland and wind and all this. Yes, on the surface. But underneath, not so much. And I know it seems like that's something out of crazy conspiracy, but when you watch this segment that I'm going to show you, and it's subtitled here, as you can see, it's in Russian. So I'm going to just let it play forward here and just do a little bit of commentary of my own on it. Codenamed Operation Valkyrie 2. This is post-World War II. Or I guess right at the end of it. Now you'd have to ask yourself at that time, why would they be sending submarines to Antarctica? There's this uh, also story that all sorts of scientists and important people in Germany went missing right before the end of the war. And that they had convoys going down there. 
and nobody could explain why. This is going to explain why. I'm going to let this play for about another 30, 45 seconds. Eighteen degrees Celsius temperature water is not all that cold. And here's the most important part right here. Located above the water's surface are dome-like vaults filled with warm air. The geothermal heating that comes up from underneath has melted the underside of that giant ice sheet and created these huge domes. You know, much like, you know, kind of weird, kind of what the flat earthers think we live under. That's kind of what really exists just down there under the ice is this huge dome over these warm lakes and these warm rivers and volcanic soil everywhere. Everything you would need other than just the seeds and the people to start a civilization. And here's a diagram of it. I'll show you a bigger picture of that later. A constant river of warm water flows to the ocean. which means there's a way in. And here it is. Now this is key. This is important. I want you to look at this image closely. Any submarine could easily pass under the coastal ice into the tunnels. Now, I would like to show you the original reason I was in um, that area. It has to do with something that I had found a long time ago. And it's this. This is exactly what they are talking about in that documentary. It's a tunnel under the ice to the interior of Antarctica. If there were giant convoys going down there, bring people, bring, bring, blah, pardon me, bringing supplies down there, they could have been constructing something. But what? I think I know what they were constructing. Now remember, this was the late 40s. The first thing that you would need to do down there, at least to their mind, if you have to, if you could wrap your mind around a, a late 1940s German, their country had been obliterated from the sky. Everything had been bombed. Power stations, all sorts of infrastructure, totally destroyed. The first thing, to my mind, they would have thought necessary to build would be a power plant. Some way to generate electricity. To get some kind of a basic, rudimentary military base going. Now, can I show proof for that? I think I can. Very close to that. Look at this. Do you see the soot? Do you see the black? This looks like vents. Perhaps smokestack style vents from under the ice. And it's right in that region where I just that tunnel was. That tunnel was right over here. And right here, this is where we see this. Now, the disposition, current status of this, given that we're seeing smoke pouring out of it, 12-30-2012, that's the date for this image. I wonder, I very do much wonder now, if there's been development, things going on down there, for the last, what will be, 70 years now? That's been out of the public consciousness, out of the public eye, but now we can put the pieces together with these images. See, that's the thing. It's, it's People ask, well, why hasn't somebody done it until now? Nobody's bothered to be very truthful. 
and I know this is going to be kind of a hard thing to hear, but the vast majority of the people that come here on YouTube come here for one reason only, and it's to get some type of a justification for their particular political bend. And if the videos they're watching don't somehow either prove that they're on the wrong side or show that they're on the right side, it, they don't listen. So many channels, great channels, lost everything because they decided they wanted to jump into the political game. When their channels weren't even based on anything political to begin with. BP Earthwatch was one of them. One of the best channels out there. He was absolutely a critical authority on everything to, to do with the sun. And to see the road that he went down, because he got baited. He got trapped into it. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to let that I'm going to learn from his mistake. He had a huge channel, and it uh, got destroyed. He's back on now, but it's much smaller. So if we can put all that aside and just look for the evidence where it exists and show it, I think we can start to make some headway with this. This right here, smoking gun that there's a way under the ice, there's scientific proof that even science admits that <laughs> there is a way to live under the ice down there, and they would have everything they need. It would just take some effort, and we know at the end of World War II, there was an enormous effort. Then you add in what Admiral Byrd said, Operation High Jump, everything else going on, it all makes sense. Everything that we've shown and there's probably going to be some things that are discovered down there that are absolutely fantastical. But that's what science and discovery and exploration has always been about. When they, when explorers came back from the Amazon to Europe and described snakes that were dozens and dozens of feet long that could squeeze a man to death, they were called crazy. But now we very much know of the anaconda. All sorts of other things as well. Giant vampire bats. I mean, flying foxes, for God's sakes. Everything. But, you know, that's kind of what I've tried to do with this channel, is that if we can look at this stuff and we can show that there is a reality going on that we haven't... Oh, I know I was going to show you guys. Hold on. Let me find that picture. Here you go. If we can show a reality that has a good basic fundamental scientific underpinning, even though it may be um, somewhat fantastical to believe, I honestly think that we can make some headway and get this into the mainstream. So I guess 15 minutes, I'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that, if you sign up for an entire year and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway?
It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? Sure. 